everyone, hope you're doing well. So I'm still getting a lot of questions from you guys in terms of what car you should list on the platform. And one of the problems that a lot of you guys are encountering is you're going into your marketplace, you're doing some research, and either you're seeing a ton of different cars pop up in every single category and they have lots of trips so it's heavily saturated so you're confused as to what car you should list or maybe you're in a market that is still sort of emerging so you don't have enough information of where to start. So you guys are just kind of seeing everything across the board. I totally understand that when you are just getting into this and you're very new and you're trying to evaluate what you're seeing and to make the best buying decision, which is very important, it can be confusing and it can be hard to figure out what to base your decision off of. And of course, there's a lot of variables that go into it, like your buying power, the area that you're located in, um, what people are doing in your area. Do you have local renters? Do you have travelers? what your situation is. So all of that needs to be taken into consideration. But sometimes what I find is that if you approach the problem or the question, maybe from a different perspective, it'll give you some clarity on how to go about it, right? So right now I'm visiting Utah. I'm not from here, not familiar with this state. I don't really know too much about it other than, you know, obviously you can go on Google and see that they are very well known for a lot of their national parks like Zion and Arches and Bryce, and there's a lot of nature type stuff to do here, right? And so just being here for a while now and kind of just driving around, you know, you start making observations. You start seeing things if you're looking for it, right? So I have noticed that probably probably 90% of the cars that I see here are definitely either off-road ready, they're for sure all-wheel drive, and they're primarily trucks and Jeeps, right? And you can tell just by taking one look at these cars that people don't just have trucks and Jeeps just for looks out here. It's because they're definitely going off-roading, they're going into these national parks, they're going to these trails, they're towing ATVs, um, just everything that is nature-based, off-roading, um, extracurricular, they are, do that's the type of stuff that people are involved here. And if I went and did some more research, you know, I noticed the area that I'm in, which is Southern Utah, is really known for some awesome spots like Sand Hollow where you can go ATVing. Um, they have a reservoir here where you could go boating and you're only 30 minutes away from Zion, which is known for its amazing hikes and the national park itself. So there's a lot to do here, a lot of trails. And just doing a quick search in my own market, last week you guys saw that I rented a 2021 Volvo XC60, I believe it was. And that was an awesome car. It would be perfect to be out here. It's not a truck and it's not a Jeep, but it still kind of fit the criteria of what people do out here because it did have an off-road mode on it. So if I was a host here in Utah, first time getting on the platform, I would literally just kind of take one look around and see, okay, this is what people come into town to do. You can see that there's a lot of people traveling. Utah is quite large, so you even just have people that are from the state that are traveling between different parts of the state because they have different recreational stuff that you can do in different parts, right? So they are looking for those trucks and those Jeeps and anything that is off-road ready or all-wheel drive to kind of fit the needs of what's going on here. And I think the unique thing about this place, which I gather right away, I don't know how much you can see behind me, but we recently got snow, is that cars like that, trucks or Jeeps, they are year round cars, right? So whether you're traveling here in the summer or you're here in the winter, it caters to all seasons. So of course that would make a lot of sense that that's the type of car that you would wanna get and list out here because it really serves the audience, the client base, the people who would be renting out here. And then you can also kind of just look around and do a little bit more research. So I just went on, Enterprises website and went on Hertz when I was renting the Volvo to see what was comparable that I could rent from your traditional car rental places. Now, when I went online, the only options that I saw that was comparable to the Volvo and price range and 
mask somewhat size not even really was a RAV4 and then from there it kind of went into the larger SUVs like um, Expeditions and Tahoes but it didn't really seem like exactly the type of car that you would want to be in while you're out here in Utah and you're visiting these national parks right so when I took a look at the traditional car rental companies there was really nothing about the options that they presented that grabbed me not even really price wise because the price wasn't that different from what I was seeing on Turo now when I went on Turo I saw some really cool options including that 2021 volvo i saw a toyota trd truck um a tesla model x which is always cool in any market so you could just see that there's such a difference between what tura offers and what your traditional car rental companies offer right so if i was a host in utah that would be my immediate guess based on the research that I've done is that I definitely need to list something that is going to cater to people who are interested in doing these recreational activities. So sometimes the answer doesn't necessarily come from just looking at the marketplace or just looking at competitors and seeing what cars that they have listed. You can actually gather a lot of information just from where you are, but it really requires just some thought and awareness to think about what is going on and what are these markets that you can cater to. So that really makes a big difference so sometimes you just want to approach the question from a different perspective I like to do things backwards so that is how I would come to this conclusion same thing with being in Southern California right we have one of the things I would say is that convertibles have consistently done very well for me whether they've been hard top soft top target tops whatever it might be they've always just performed well because it's so synonymous with being in Southern California the weather is good year-round so it caters to all times of the year, all seasons, and it just makes a lot of sense, right? When people come into town, they think California, palm trees, beaches, convertibles. It just all kind of goes together. And even for local people, most local people don't have convertibles, so they like the idea of getting into something different and getting into a convertible. Now that answer wouldn't necessarily come to you from doing research in the marketplace and you know having that be blatantly obvious. That's something that you get just from having experience of being in a certain location and being aware and just kind of thinking outside of the box to see what's going on. So I know a lot of you have been messaging me, asking me you know, what I think about um, you know, this maker model in this market. And it's very hard for me to say because I'm not in that market. I would have to really thoroughly research the Turo marketplace to give you somewhat of an answer, but really a lot of your information can just come from your surroundings. You can make a pretty educated guess on what would do well. And finally, I will end with sort of this note. I think that anytime you are starting anything new, right? Beginnings are always very special. So for a lot of you, you guys are getting into the Turo business for the first time and it's exciting, and especially when it's something tangible like a car. And if you're getting into something that is unique and experiential, it is really fun. That's part of the reason why I've done this for so long is because you, you really do enjoy it. It's a fun business to be in. But having that proper foundation in anything, right? Not just in business, but in life too, is very, very, very important because if you have a proper foundation, then that will allow you to tackle any problems that come along the way. And problems are always inevitable. They're gonna happen over time no matter what. It's just the nature, the natural cycle of things, right? In business, there's problems. In life, there's problems. But if you have that strong foundation, you really have a great uh, base to deal with your problems. So the reason why I bring that up is because going into figuring out what your car should be, it should be a part of that strong foundation that you lay for the start of your Turo journey. So you really wanna take your time and you wanna research it and you wanna think you know, kind of deeply about what car really makes sense, not just what you might see on the surface, not just what you might personally think is cool, all those things are important too, but what would make sense to the people that you're gonna be offering this value to, that you're gonna make this experience available to. So those are the types of questions that you wanna answer yourself is what type of experience can I provide and what type of experience is that person gonna have? So one of the things that I really recommend is that if you see anything in the marketplace that you think would be a really good fit for you to list on the platform, 
you should definitely go rent it or go rent something comparable. Maybe it's not the exact card, but maybe it's similar and go experience what that is like so that you can sort of better grasp a feel for what it would be like if you were a host and you can also see what you can do better. So many of my cars that I've listed on the platform, that's actually how I ended up with them. My Tesla Model S, I rented that first. Um, my Polaris Slingshot, I rented that first. A Vanderhall, I rented that first. So these were all things that I actually went out and I experienced and I got a feel for how the, these cars were and what that would be like if I hosted that car. And that's how I understood that, okay, if I do bring this offering to the platform, here's what I could do better, here's how it will fit into my system that I have, and here's how I can manage it. Um, I had a great question today from one of my members asking, you know, when I had a Tesla, how did I feel about uh, the element of having to charge that car? How did it kind of fit into my flow of doing business? A lot of you are thinking about listing Teslas right now and charging is a big part of it, right? There is definitely some time commitment to that. If you don't have charging set up at your personal location in your garage, if you're not wired for that, then that can add an additional layer to it. So I would definitely recommend go out and rent a Tesla, go rent a Model 3, go rent a Model Y or a Model S or an X, whatever it might be that you're looking into and kind of go through the motions of what it would be like if you hosted that car and you needed to charge it, how would it fit into your day and your system? So you want to lay that strong foundation that is very systematized, that makes sense to you personally, something that you are passionate about that will get you excited to do. All of these things are really important and that will really set you up for really success on the platform because when the problems do occur, you'll be ready and sort of willing to deal with them because you had a strong foundation. So hopefully you guys find these little tips helpful. That is just my little um, two cents on finding a car to list on the platform. So you guys, thank you so much for watching and thank you for sending in all of your questions. I'll continue to look through them and bring you guys more content to help you guys get started on your tour journey. Once again, my name is Simon. This is Simon's Experience. And if you like this channel, be sure to subscribe. Take care, guys.